Research, like everything else, is never neutral. I'm a master's student at the Harvard Graduate School of Education, and today I'm going to talk about research frameworks and how a researcher's worldview can ultimately shape the outcomes of their research. First, what are the classic ways that researchers operate? The positivist paradigm is the oldest, where truth is understood as something that can be observed and tested. Knowledge is then based on the hard sciences like physics or chemistry. This framework rejects everything that can't be tested and believes that neutral and bias-free research can exist. The research goal is to generalize a new understanding of people or the world based on an observable sample set. Now you can probably guess why fields like psychology were dismissed for a really long time. Next is post-positivist. Here, the idea of truth and knowledge haven't really changed, but rather humans aren't totally able to see or understand all of it. It also accepts that researchers aren't bias-free, so there's a lot of acknowledgement of limitations. Research findings are what is most likely based on what we can understand. The interpretive paradigm really comes in as a challenge to both of these concepts, saying that reality isn't exactly objective. Instead, each person has a concept of reality that we're simultaneously experiencing and constructing, so we can't separate ourselves from what we know. This approach also treats qualitative research, like interviews or observations, as valid inputs, not just tested in a lab. Instead of removing objectivity, the research is placed into the natural setting with the participant to see how they construct their reality. Finally, the critical paradigm challenges the idea that the world can be understood through a single truth. Instead, it states that reality itself is a product of human creation. Consider the fact that peer-reviewed journals are generally seen as a source of knowledge in our society, but oral traditions are not. Critical inquiry points out that power obscures reality and thus must be examined as part of the research process. Additionally, it's not concerned with just understanding the world, but transforming the systems to empower those who have traditionally been marginalized and gatekept from having access to knowledge. Now that you know these frameworks, reflect on how you want to apply them to your future research. As Critical Inquiry tells us, reflection and action is a political act in and of itself.